Here's what you need to know to pass the level two Google Educator exam in 2023. Hi, my name is John Selwash. I help teachers and students use Google products in the classroom. I recently took the level two Google Educator exam and this is a little bit about my experience. The exam consists of 35 multiple choice questions. We'll talk more about what that means in just a minute. It is a three hour time limit, but you can access external resources. So you can look things up, confirm answers, as long as you stay within that three hour time limit. The exam fee is $25, which is a great deal. And when you pass, your certification will last for three years. Now, Google has updated the level two test with some new things. First, I did receive some questions on some new product features, including things like smart chips for Google Docs and Google Sheets, some new Chrome browser features like virtual desks and tab groups, and some new Google Meet features, including how Google Meet and Google Classroom integrate and work together. I also received some questions on some lesser known Google products, including Google Photos and Arts and Culture. I'll give you a list of some of those in just a minute. Uh, but Google did remove questions about Blogger, at least I didn't receive any, which is great because I haven't used Blogger in years and Google hasn't updated Blogger in like a decade. So it seems appropriate to get rid of it from uh, the test. Google also had a new question style this year um, that I'll call comparison, where they give me two Google products and I have to compare and contrast the capabilities of them. I'll give you an example here in a minute. Now, what products are included on the exam? Well, everything that's included on level one and some of those additional products that I just mentioned, things like Google Maps, My Maps, Google Trends, Keep, Add-ons, Extensions, Chat, and quite a few more. I've got a comprehensive study guide that I'll link in the description uh, that'll help you prepare for the test. Here are a couple of sample questions that I wrote in the style of the level two test, just to kind of give you a sense of uh, the type of thing that you'll be expected to understand. This is an advanced question on Google Sheets and data analysis. Which of these features would help a teacher analyze data? Correct answers would include pivot tables, conditional formatting, and custom charts. Now there is an interesting thing that happens um, and this is true on the test as well. If you look up at the top of the question, you're gonna see a little clue just like this that it'll say, please select two, select three. So that'll at least give you an indication of how many correct choices uh, the test is looking for. Here's another style question that uh, you can be expected to receive. This is a drag and drop where you need to match the tool and the um, school or educational application for that tool. So arts and cultures, drive, keep, etc. We're going to rearrange those um, and match them up. Now we don't know exactly how Google scores these questions. So like if you got three uh, correct or you've got two of the four correct, how do you get credit? I have no idea. 80% um, is the minimum score required to pass but you won't know specifically how you did on any individual question. You can take the exam on a Mac, a PC, or a Chromebook. You just have to have a webcam. It has to be a webcam enabled device. No cell phones, no iPads um, allowed uh, for taking the exam. I really like the certificate that Google provides. Uh, the certificate will be stored and verified by credential.net. So you can link your email signature or when you tell people that you're a Google certified educator, you link to the certificate and this will verify that it actually is a legitimate uh, authorized credential. Now let's take a deeper look at my exam experience. These are the types of questions I received and this will lead us into some ways that you can prepare for the level two test. First thing I did is I just kind of categorized all of the questions into three general groups. We have the productivity tools, that's Gmail and the related, or excuse me, Google Drive and the related tools. Then the communication tools, Gmail, Calendar, Meet, and then the classroom tools like Google Classroom, YouTube, Maps, uh, etc. Now, obviously, if you add those up, that's way more than 35 because most of these questions, again, are select all that apply. So you're really making 60 to 70 actual selections within those 35 questions. How do you spend your time studying? Well, based on this, you definitely want to spend some time on Google Drive. Um, Doc, slide sheets, forms, that's going to give you the most value for your time. Here's a much closer look at uh, the types of questions that I received and comparing them to uh, the past several years all the way back to 2019. 
Um, overall, there's you know not a ton of uh, huge surprises here. Um, I did receive quite a few more questions on Google Classroom in the 2023 test than I have previously. You know, went from one in um, 2022 all the way up to th uh, nine this year. And then, as I've mentioned a couple of times, I got a lot of questions on Google Docs. Google's made a lot of updates to Docs, so there's a lot of questions uh, related to them. Now, in addition to these standard tools, I've received questions on them going back for many, many years. Let's take a look at some new additions. So this year I received uh, a question on Google Photos, Arts and Culture, Google Groups, and Scholar, and Trends, and Drawing. If you are not familiar with these products, you definitely want to brush up on them before you take your level two test. I did not receive any questions on Blogger, like I mentioned, or Google Drive add-ons. Now, just because I didn't or I got these numbers does not necessarily mean that you will. Uh, this is just something that will hopefully help you prepare. How do you study? How do you prepare for the level two test? Well, here's a couple of suggestions. Google does offer a comprehensive self-paced online course that you can take. It's the advanced uh, course. This is on the Google for Education website. This course is very comprehensive. It will cover everything on the exam, but it is incredibly boring. <laughs> it is 15 plus hours of reading and um, just working by yourself. There's no interaction, there's, uh, there's no community. Um, so personally, not my favorite way to prepare, but if you can stay awake, it will help you. Um, you really need to know the advanced elements of these Google products. You know, being a superficial user of Gmail, Calendar, and Drive is not gonna cut it. Level two goes much deeper than what you would expect to find in a level one test. Uh, so be prepared for that. When I say advanced, here are some specific examples. So are you familiar with smart chips and templates in Google Docs and Google Sheets? Have you um, created a rubric in Google Classroom? And have you uh, used some of the advanced features of Google Chrome, such as pinning tabs, creating tab groups, desks, and linking to uh, text on a specific web page? These are some examples of specific advanced features that could be uh, assessed on the level two test. Here are some of those uh, advanced products that we've mentioned already. If you're not familiar with scholar trends and arts and culture, you definitely wanna brush up on them. You're not gonna get a lot of questions on each of them, but together combined, you'll probably get five or six, which could be uh, the difference between passing or failing. Now there's a lot in here. And so what I've done is I've gone through Google's free course. I've taken the exam myself many times and I've created my own study guide. This study guide has a list of all of the key skills that you need to be familiar with and uh, be able to discuss in order to pass that level two test. The study guide is free. You head over to geducator.com and download that. And uh, that'll give you a good sense of where to focus your study. Now this year, there were some comparison questions, which I actually really enjoyed. They were a fun type of question. And uh, you'll probably receive several of these as well, where you're gonna be asked to compare things like slides and Jamboard or drawing and Google uh, Slides. Here's an example where, you know, I might be asked to compare Google Keep and Jamboard, and then I've given a list of things. You really have to have a deep understanding of these products if you expect to pass this test. We'll go ahead and move them on uh, to the page, and you'll see how that, uh, that shakes down. So you probably know that all of these features are in there, but you may not know specifically where they belong. So this is where your study and preparation will be very important. Now, if you're not interested in taking Google's self-paced course, if you'd like to work together with a group of other uh, teachers and myself, I'd invite you to consider signing up for the Google Certification Academy. I run cohorts in the winter and summer every year. Usually each cohort is between 30 and 50 teachers. And uh, at the end of that course, I personally guarantee that you'll be ready to pass the level two. Google certification test. You can head over to geducator.com or check the link in the description uh, to find an upcoming cohort. Well, good luck on your level two certification test. If you're interested in downloading that free study guide, you can click this link up here. And if you'd like to have some additional tips and study suggestions for preparing for the test, I recommend that you check out the second half of my level one review video, which you can access down below.